Welcome back to another day of the 31 animals in 31 days challenge. We are super excited as we are officially past the halfway point in the month. We're still a few animals behind on paintings, but I'm very optimistic that we are going to be able to catch up soon as I have finally been able to complete and edit three paintings and three videos in two days. So that's very promising for us uh, catching up eventually in this challenge. Today, we are going to be painting puffins. So the puffin is a bird that is near and dear to many hearts, especially East Coasters in Canada. And I had one experience with puffins. I was doing my pilot whale research during my, uh, not my graduate work, but my honors thesis work at Dalhousie University. And as of the three roles on the boat, one person collects data on whale encounters, the other person's the photographer, and the other person is the naturalist on board. So once I was working as the naturalist, as the set of three researchers were, and I got asked by a very avid birder that, uh, whether or not that we were gonna be able to see puffins on the tour. The boat goes out for a three hour tour, we do the coastline, we do whales, all sorts of stuff. And I was like, no, they're really on the other side of Nova Scotia, they're on the Atlantic side where Cape Breton where my work was, was on the Gulf of St. Lawrence side. So I was like, no, we probably won't see puffins, especially because it was really foggy. And a puffin, literally, I kid you not, 10 minutes later, flew not only past our boat, but like landed on the top area of the, of the boat and sat there for like a whole 30 seconds. So everybody saw it and then it kept going. And the guy turned and looked at me and was like, so you guys never see puffins. And that is the one puffin I've ever seen in my life. To this day, it was the strangest thing. It's like nature was just like, ah oh, yeah, scientists, we're just gonna prove you very wrong today. I digress, we're gonna go get to painting this puffin and we'll hope you guys enjoy it. Oh my gosh, that story kills me. I, uh, I, cause I record the vo voiceovers like sometimes days later when I am going back to edit the videos. I have no idea what I've said in the introductions and I normally do them in like one or maybe two takes, so. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so this puffin, wow. Okay, so I I really think puffins are fascinating. I think they've captured a lot of people's affection. Um, they're just so funny looking and we don't have a lot of birds that look like tropical birds in Canada. And yet this one is such a bright beaked bird. It really reminds you of like a parrot or something that you'd see down south. And um, yeah, it's kind of funny. This reference image, I have heavily photoshopped actually. The puffin had a very deep green cast on it that I didn't like. So I completely edited it in Photoshop to have a bit of a warmer cast on it so that the shadow under its belly was more yellow and then I made the light coming through its wings. It, it turned out to be a lot more purple red and I thought it just looked cool. I liked the way the lighting looked. So I actually based the entire background image off, similar way how I've done it with um, shades of green to kind of make it look like a forest, you know, highlights and shadow in the background. I did it with the one of the colors from the wing and then I kind of used that to make the background so that the bird would really pop out from it but also blend into it, if that makes sense, as a, you know, kind of nice complementary color. Yeah, so now we're painting the eye. Puffins have such amazing eyes. They, they have such a great orange yellow gradient right around their eye and they have such fun little black markings, I guess like a stripe around their eye. It just, they're so distinctive. Their coloration is so beautiful. And I had a lot of fun trying to figure out the shape of the eye, especially cause the bottom shadow has this kind of like curve up in the feathers that I'm gonna repaint on in a second. It kind of flips out to the left, there it is. And um, yeah, it's kind of really fun how much expression they can get with that extra decoration around their eye. And with the gradient at the feathers, I wanted to make sure that we had a light at the top to kind of help the light bouncing off the top of its head because we have so much light shining through the wings that it, the light source is kind of behind the animal. And then these bright, colors in the beak are just so awesome to try and try and nail. So we have bright orange, we kind of have yellow, and then we kind of have like a red orange, all kind of mixed in in this gradient. And then we have really fine details and lines kind of 
throughout the beak as well to really make it punch out and punch through. Yeah, it was so fun painting this and I really wanted to start with its head and kind of refine that as the hardest area. Especially all of these, you know, cute little fish with all their cute little eyes that are sticking out of its beak. Puffins are classically carrying a giant mouthful and it's amazing that they can catch this many animals in one dive. Like that's just, that's nuts. That It's not just they caught one, they catch so many at once. Like it's not that they're storing it in their cheek, they just one mouthful and off they go. Yeah, so I really want to try and get these scale textures down of these little fish and obviously have some really good contrast to make their little eyes really stand out. Going back in and adding the dots. And you know, I do my little dot trick to uh, get the glints. And then you wanna make sure you get the little, little fins on their tails so you can clearly kind of separate the two sides. And they're all different sizes, which is super fun. And I'm stepping back and just trying to make sure I have the lighting of the fish good some are kind of darker than others so i'm kind of using some colors to knock them back adding a little bit more blue tones to them to to make them stand out a little bit more from the beak of the puffin get a bit more contrast in there just to make it a bit more interesting they're pretty silver in the photo but i wanted to make them a bit more bluer then the easiest thing for me to paint uh because i already had this brush with white paint on it was the main body of the paint of the uh, puffin i keep almost calling it a penguin I've just worked so much with penguins that it's it's the natural pea bird that uh, rolls off my tongue. So if I ever say penguin in this, just substitute it for puffin uh, and accept my apologies. But yeah, so I, I've gone through and I've kind of w done a wash of off-white and then you can see I've gone through, you might be able to see them. I've done very strong white strokes that you can see of just a few feathers throughout the belly. That's to kind of help add that texture so that's light getting caught on some of the random feathers that are sticking out from its belly at different angles. And the tone at the very bottom of the puffin is that nice red background color very subtly. So you can kind of see how it gives a more rounded appearance. At this point in the painting, I was properly concerned about the feathers. Different textures in animals, especially like feathers, scales, they, they're they really difficult because there's such a defined pattern. You know, to get very on a species specific level, the amount of feathers that they have are kind of replicatable, you know, based on different animals. They'll, they'll always have like a row of like 14, give or take a few feathers um, in, a, in a certain wing, for example. So you, you wanna pay attention to those details. And it was a fine balance for me to what shortcuts I could take in trying to speed up this painting and get it done within a day. Cause I, I was on track before this painting. The um, I've also finished painting the zebra when I'm recording the audio for this. That's the next painting coming up after the puffin. And it uh, both animals I went over time with. So it was kind of whoops on my part, but yeah, it was a fine balance to try and figure out how much I should uh, I should be rushing this versus how exact I could get all the feathers. But at the end of the day, I really wanted to spend a lot of time getting the feathers. So this is the part where I finally settled into it and was like, okay, we're gonna do this one feather at a time and just check them off. So I go in and I start blending them. And this back wing especially had a lot of really light gray tones in it and you can see the light shining through the feathers. Like the, they're kind of picking up that transparency feature of the thinner feathers versus the thicker wing, which I think is just a, such a cool lighting effect that I wanted to include in the painting. So I decided that especially for the feathers at the edge that are larger, we were gonna spend a lot more time on them and, and get them pretty photorealistic. If I was doing this as a much larger painting, then I would go in with a very fine toothed brush and create those barbs that are, you know, between the main branch of the feather that goes out towards the outside. Like if you've ever looked at a feather, you can kind of see the angle that the, that the little cuts in that I'm painting on these three are. 
all of the barbs would kind of be in that same direction and would flow out towards the tip. All those would kind of be included in this. Right now they're not, because um, that would just be a whole nother level of, of detail to try and create those fine lines and then blend it. So that from far away would look this color, but up close that detail would become apparent. That's the kind of stuff I do when I spend like weeks on a painting. And that's, that's a detail that had to be sacrificed for a challenge like this. But, um, but it's something you can definitely add if you wanted to create a more photorealistic representation of this. And I'm kind of just using those initial white strokes that I did along the kind of interior line of feathers as a guide for where to place the shadows. And there's a lot more contrast than there will be at the end, but yeah, the tip of the feathers is always the lightest. I'm going over it in white because it, it is very bright. At the very tip, there's a lot of light shining through them. And that appearance kind of also stands out in the second row to some extent. And then we get into kind of more darker feathers as we move into the interior. The thing you want to know about trying to paint anything that's transparent is that you want to use the same color that you see in the background. Even though light is yellow or blue, it can kind of look a little off. So I used a similar tone towards the background when I was painting the light through the feathers to try and help that. Because whatever the background is, that's kind of the, the tone that the light's gonna have. So you can see on this one, it's kind of more of a pink gray. And then when I move into the other wing where we're looking at the bottom of the feathers, even more you can see that red punching through. You can really see how it's, it's a lot brighter and more saturated than the back wing. And that's intentional because remember with anything that's closer towards us, we wanna create more contrast. And more contrast and especially warmer colors help something punch out at you through the painting. It, it makes it look more 3D. So the back wing is a lot more subtle and uh, more well blended and less contrast. And the front wing is gonna have the brightest whites and the darkest blacks because it is the part of the animal that's closest towards us, even more so than the head is. So after I kind of started this wing, I've gone back and added a bit more warm tones to the brown of the feathers, like the darker part of the right wing and trying to add balance that texture of how dark I want it to look versus this next wing that I'm doing. And you can see I'm, I'm trying to reserve the rows of the feathers on the interior of the wing, but I'm also trying to do it in a much more quicker manner. So I'm using a bigger brush and trying to get the strokes from it to just kind of match the depth of the feathers. So this is about selectively choosing where you want your detail to go in your paintings. I love how both wings kind of really frame the puffin's face and make, help draw attention to it. It's kind of like a really striking pose, like mid flap. Otherwise, the kind of interior of the wings and the body of the puffin, I don't really want to be too much of a main focus. So I'm okay with having less detail in those areas. It's a balance between using black and then kind of like a warm brown, warm red brown color in, um, in this. And going back through and adding some of those highlights in. I'm right, working on the tail a little bit here. I guess it's off camera slightly, so I apologize for that. But yeah, and just trying to create really smooth gradients of those different colors along these feathers and I'm kind of ignoring the notches in the feathers for the most part and then now I'm gonna go back in and repaint them. Some of the notches are random, some are very similar to what was placed in the reference photo because I think the best random patterns are actually what you see in nature. And then I've gone in with the dark brush and just kind of added like a slow curve along those feathers that are kind of sticking out from the notches. And that helps make it look more like how a feather would look as well. So it's not just one smooth edge. Feathers kind of stick out in different directions when they're separated like this and not all clipped together, so. And then we're adding some of that nice kind of light burgundy color to the bottom side of the wing just to try and add some more color to it. 
and then going in with a darker color to get some of the shadows in. Still really trying to pay attention to how much contrast is in this wing versus the back one and comparing those two. So you can kind of see now that we zoom back how it all came together and how the two wings look like light is shining through all the feathers. And we have a puffin full of fish. It's so funny when I'm painting and the canvas moves on me, sometimes doing fine lines, it shifts on the canvas because I only have one supporting beam behind it. At some point, I'm gonna get a better easel. It's on the list, it's something that's not gonna tilt on me because it's, I jump so much when uh, you're painting and doing like a fine little detail like this and then it, it shifts. It's just, it's so startling. There we have it. That's pretty much all for the puffin. Okay, thank you for watching how to paint transparent feathers and other details on this Atlantic puffin. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are feeling like watching more time-lapse tutorials of how I make my paintings, check out this playlist below. Otherwise, we will see you very shortly and today, currently, we are working on a zebra. So we're going to go continue working on that painting and we'll see you next time.